Ladies and gentlemen, after Minister Orlando, we have uh, the honor of uh, the visit of uh, uh, Under Secretary for European Affairs of the Italian uh, Republic, Mr. Sandro Godzi. Um, Mr. Godzi, please be welcome. Uh, please take the floor and uh, tell us more about the Italian presidency's uh, priorities as far as legal uh, affairs committee might be concerned. Thank you very much. Okay. Grazie. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Good afternoon to everyone. I'm very happy to be here today and to uh, get to know you at the beginning of this legislative term, which uh, for the Italian presidency will also be the beginning of a new political cycle, which will focus on less priorities in number, but ones that are more important for us. And this uh, makes the legal uh, work and the specific uh, work of uh, the legislature even more important. Beyond uh, just the activities of your own commission, committee, we also need to focus on growth, competitiveness, employment, in a framework of uh, completing and simplifying everything. And it's in this context that I would like to um, underline these ideas, completion and simplification. <coughs> because all, all of our priorities are focusing on these two points. We would like to play a role that uh, I will explain in further detail uh, in uh, regard to specific uh, legislative dossiers that I hope that during the Italian presidency of the Council, we will be able to work on with you. And they are the, um, the main uh, thread that is holding together all of our work. That is uh, to take care, to care about competitiveness, um, uh, interests uh, and rights, and trans uh, cross-border activity. These are the three issues that we'd like to promote, and we would like to um, make a commitment to bring everything forward to achieve uh, progress. And we are going to be waiting for the legislative uh, proposals uh, from you that uh, are co also connected with uh, freedom of expression, uh, with know-how, and with uh, all of the um, provisions governing intellectual property rights. And I think that all of this is uh, of fundamental importance in order to prepare our work better to have a real, uh, real policies and uh, legislation that are focusing on growth because we need to provide concrete reply answers for our citizens. And in these terms, concrete responses should be the concrete answers should be the unofficial motto of our presidency. Because we believe that we really need to work on the new legal framework of the European Union. And that means the legislative work uh, and uh, working within the single legal framework and the new tools that have uh, developed especially in regard to competitiveness. In view of uh, work on legal affairs within the uh, uh, single market, there is still a lot of, uh, there's still many things to take advantage of and there's still room for maneuver. There are many things that we can do in order to improve the competitiveness of the European Union. And there is a need for further activity to complete and strengthen the uh, regulatory uh, environment and to, in order to make it more favorable for businesses. This is not a new uh, issue, but unfortunately it is an issue that is still quite relevant because if in previous legislative terms the European Union had mentioned it as a priority and we did not do so at the beginning of our semester in the beginning of this legislative term, that would not be in, that we're due to a lack of originality on our part, but because there's a need for better answers to be given that will uh, help us to achieve our goals. Especially in regard to businesses, we need to have a framework that is more favorable to European growth, that allows for the possibility of exploiting the single market and creating further jobs. This will be a more integrated approach to focus on the legal framework in which the single market operates. And in the coming weeks and months, we're going to have a lot of important work to do in some key um, 
areas of uh, legislative cooperation uh, in view of uh, in the framework of the cooperation between the uh, presidency the council of ministers and the european parliament and one very wide broad area on which we intend to focus is the issue of governance tools we are aware that we need to improve governance in regard to competitiveness governance in uh, regard to the single market as well. On this point, we are uh, engaged in uh, a ver some very intense, uh, intensive work in order to improve the roles and activity of the Competitiveness Council. And I will uh, mention uh, more about this. Uh, I will speak about this in further detail in a few minutes. These activities are linked up with a process which uh, has been decided on. But uh, not just is it the subject of a decision, it is also necessary. We need to think about and uh, redevise the European strategy for 2020. We have made a formal commitment to do so. And you know that uh, the uh, European Council meeting in March 2015 will need to develop a new Europe 2020 strategy. But this uh, evidently requires some uh, preliminary work, preparation, and consultation, which will take place during our presidency. And this is also linked with some activity that we will carry out in our semester, which I hope we will be working on together. Because the review of the European 2020 strategy must focus on the new uh, great political priorities. Because as regards the current presidency of the Council, we are focusing in particularly on business uh, for a uh, European Union that is experienced in a time of change. We started working on this at the end of June, and we are aware of the commitments that the President of the Commission, Jean-Claude Juncker, has assumed even before being elected by you as uh, President of the Euro uh, European Commission. So we need to look at the Europe 2020 strategy once again and define our new strategic priorities. As they have been indicated in the agenda proposed by us at the end of June. On this point as well, we need to work to remove the obstacles that continue to uh, exist in the European Union. In the in legal terms and, and in terms of the single market, we know that there are obstacles that have been around for 20 years. When we announced and uh, the and decided to create this single market, there were cross-border obstacles, and there are still some now, and there are proposals that, on which we hope to make progress during these uh, six months. In order to favor, most of all, small and medium-sized enterprises and cross-border business activity. Therefore, we need to uh, complete the uh, regulations concerning the internal market and update our regulations in view of new challenges that have appeared. One of the more most important uh, legal challenges concerns technology as well. And that's the issue of intellectual property and the uh, challenges that technology poses in regards to intellectual property rights. We need to deal with this issue together and it is a highly legalistic issue but also of great economic and political importance. Base and it will have an important effect depending on the direction that the European Union decides to take. As I mentioned, there have been many obstacles and many bottlenecks concerning uh, cross-border activity within the European market, and we need to eliminate these barriers and simplify regulations. And the refit work was already begun during the previous legislative term, and we will uh, look forward to coordinating that with you during this legislative term. There is a strong need to identify some uh, cases where there, is, there are too many regulations or there is too much bureaucracy that have developed uh, during the work of the European Union. And there have been times where it seemed that all of the institutions have identified growth as a goal and that means eliminating bureaucratic obstacles. 
and this needs to be done in the coming years. This is an important issue and a difficult one to deal with at this moment, at this historic juncture for Europe, because there's also very much disaffection in regard to Europe. But still, there are expectations from uh, economic operators, uh, especially in regard to the internal market, that, and their expectations have not been satisfied, at least in the way that economic operators were expecting them to be satisfied. We, as the European Union, have often been too slow to reach the goals that we've set for ourselves. And therefore, we need to supplement uh, our work and uh, simplify it as well. Another aspect which concerns the issue of governance is the one that was I mentioned at the beginning of my speech. And we consider that, uh, especially in regard to the Council's activity, but that will inevitably have an effect and in order to improve the relations between the Council of Ministers and the European Parliament, there is a need for uh, to find some consensus. We have found a very broad consensus in the um, informal uh, Internal Affairs Council meeting that we held in Mar and we have found that there's a need to improve uh, governance in regard to competitiveness and t to strengthen the role of the Competitiveness Council, which is your main interlocutor, especially when we are discussing legislative activity. We believe that uh, within the framework of the work of this uh, council, there have been, uh, there is a need to uh, improve consistency and reduce uh, fragmentation in the sector, and because all of this will support competitiveness uh, in regards to the council's activity. We need to simplify decision-making processes and uh, accelerate them. There have there have been, and we need to leave political debate to the real key points for the European uh, community. And uh, we are working on this as well in the Council of Ministers and the Competitiveness Council. We need to make commitments to uh, make proposals that will increase the participation and commitment of various, the various national ministers towards the activities of the Competitiveness Council. And we also need to improve coordination concerning the um, dissemination of information regarding issues linked to competitiveness, and which uh, therefore means also growth and increasing the amount of jobs. And that's why last week uh, we focused uh, on improving governance in the informal uh, council meeting, uh, because there is a need for uh, policy work and for work at the ministerial level as well. And we also would like to share more information and have more participation from the member states. And therefore, we would like to strengthen policy coordination in some meetings of the Competitiveness Council. We think that this would be a good practice to have a representative of the European Parliament present at those meetings. We've mentioned the possibility of having some debates at the meetings of the Competitiveness Council on key issues that are folk, that are linked up with uh, our, with key issues of competitiveness uh, about which the Parliament would like to have a say. And we have uh, made this uh, proposal to the other delegations and member states last week, and we received a mandate to, uh, to go ahead and work on more operational proposals, and we will do so. We consider that in line with what was uh, requested by the European Council, which uh, believed that we need to retain the refit program, which means that we will try to bring this uh, further ahead in operational terms. Simplification of regulations concerning legislative work is one of our intentions as uh, the presidency. We want to provide some specific uh, conclusions for the uh, Competitiveness Council meeting, which will take place at the end of the, our semester, that is at the end of December. This is the general policy, political and institutional framework within which we would like to place uh, our proposals and the specific legislative priorities that uh, I imagine uh, the, this, uh, commission, uh, this committee would like to debate with the presidency about. This is my first uh, presentation uh, here, 
and the one of the one of the important issues is the trademark uh, package. We need to uh, harmonize the legislation of the member states concerning uh, trademarks and make them consistent with the system of the community trademark. As I said in my introduction, there is a lot of updating that we need to do concerning the enormous amount of work that takes place on this issue in the European Union. And one of them is that we need to have targeted updating concerning the system of trademarks in Europe in order to make it more effective and simplify it. As I said uh, earlier, our second priority is simplification. We need to make the protection of trademarks more effective and simpler and for European businesses. In order to promote innovation and growth, I don't need to make you more aware of this because uh, I'm speaking before the Legal Affairs Committee of the European Parliament. For sure you're aware of this issue's importance. And there is a need for harmonization of the current uh, legislative acts and further updating. We should look at the figures that have uh, come out of this study uh, j uh, jointly carried out by the Ar Office for Market Harmon Harmonization of the Internal Market and the European Patent Office, which showed that uh, companies that make intense, extensive use of trademarks generated 21% of all employment in the European Union during the period from 2008 to 2010. That means more than 45 million uh, jobs and 34% of the uh, GDP. To improve this system would be a substantial and concrete contribution to competitiveness and to economic growth. This package is one of the legislative priorities for our presidency and we're also basing ourselves on the excellent uh, work of uh, the previous uh, presidencies, that is the um, Greek, uh, Lithuanian, and Irish presidencies. And the Committee of uh, Permanent uh, Representatives gave the Council a mandate to uh, begin a dialogue with the European Parliament concerning a compromise text that will be submitted to the President's present. And we are ready to work with uh, your committee, and we hope to reach a political agreement before the end of our six-month uh, uh, in the presidency. Another great priority for us in terms of legislation, uh, which I, I wish to bring to your attention, concerns uh, trade secrets. There has been a proposal concerning uh, know-how, commercial information, and confidential information. One, one of our priorities is the issue of fundamental rights. Here there are issues that concern the Charter of Fundamental Rights that are at stake. Uh, in the handling of this dossier. For instance, uh, free dissemination of information, intellectual property rights, and how we can deal, uh, how we can support business know-how in the most effective way possible. This, uh, all this comes out of the TRIPS uh, agreement, which is an extremely important for the European economy. We are convinced that uh, with a specific European uh, regulation, specific uh, European form of harmonization, we can guarantee for companies, especially for small and medium-sized enterprises, as an, an accurate level of protection. And this will also be an effective uh, tool to which uh, they would have recourse in the case of theft or illicit use of commercial of trade secrets. One of our goals is to motivate cross-border activity as well, and we consider that uh, legislative work concerning trade secrets will provide gr greater incentive for innovation and research, especially at the cross-border level within the internal market. This can encourage businesses and researchers coming from various uh, member states of the European Union to commit themselves to joint projects in the areas of innovation and research. At this point, I'd like to make a reference to the presidency, uh, to the wor presidency's work. The Greek presidency provided an excellent piece of work. Uh, on May 26, 2014, they reached, developed general guidelines on a compromise uh, text. We hope that your committee will be able to examine the proposal and vote uh, on a text as soon as possible.
asked the presidency, we are ready to begin negotiations in order to achieve uh, an agreement at the first reading with the European Parliament. From this point of view, we hope that we'll be able to begin working with you as soon as possible. Another very relevant issue in terms of the political goals that I mentioned in my introduction is the issue of uh, modernizing the uh, legal for framework for authors' rights. As you know, the public consultation which uh, took place under the previous uh, commission, um, various uh, divergences uh, among the member states emerged. This uh, text has already been uh, published on the Commission's website, so, so you can see what are some important uh, differences among the member states uh, in this regard. President Juncker mentioned this issue as one of his priorities, and he specifically mentioned that he would like to present a legislative proposal in the coming six months. Once the European, new European Commission has uh, officially begun its mandate, we are ready to uh, support a reform process, and we consider that this uh, process must be dealt with in a way that will provide some certainties, especially in regards to investments. We need to work on the positive consequences that uh, a proposal in this uh, regard could provide. That is, how we can consolidate the single market in terms of uh, digital content and uh, creative activity in light of um, the existing cultural diversity. As you know very well, authors' uh, rights and the rights of uh, performers and uh, producers of uh, recordings and uh, audiovisual content are rather mu much more exposed to illicit use in uh, the digital environment. This is an issue that we absolutely need to deal with. On the other hand, we know that new model, business models, which are based on online distribution of content, are creating new opportunities uh, to for create income, and in recent years they have uh, grown exponentially in terms of the consumption of these services. As I said, this is an issue that we need to work on, but we need to know that uh, any uh, process procedure concerning the revision of uh, copyright law as began with the public uh, uh, consultation and should lead to a white uh, paper. We will see what the decisions uh, by the Juncker Commission will be how, in spite of the fact that we've already gone ahead to um, developing a new legislative proposal. We will need to guarantee a correct balance between new companies who, which have as uh, their core business uh, dealing with uh, online content, and an effective and efficient uh, regulatory system that will protect authors' rights, with some adjustments that uh, might be uh, on a minimal scale in regard to the system that is currently valid at the European level. This uh, system has already shown itself to be flexible and sustainable for a wide variety of digital uses. This is an issue that we need to deal with, but to deal with carefully in order to provide the best uh, way possible to reconcile all the various interests involved. And this should uh, be viewed in light of the results of the consultation process that was uh, carried out by the Commission. Another issue that is uh, very important and then, uh, Chairman, you will tell me whether I can continue my presentation for a few more minutes or if I should go directly to questions and answers. Another issue to which I'd like to bring, which I'd like to bring your attention is the issue of single-member private limited uh, companies. And I wish to mention this issue because it's another dossier that constitutes a priority for us. It fits with the goals that I mentioned, that is, removing obstacles to cross-border activity. And in this area, there are some uh, evident difficulties uh, in terms of how to uh, operate on a cross -border, in a cross-border framework due to the di diversity of um, national legislation and the lack of trust 
from potential clients. And this is particularly to be seen as a lack of trust in uh, small and medium-sized enterprises because there is uncertainty provided um, by the legal framework, uh, which does not to provide sufficient s certainty for uh, con content uh, producers and for small and medium-sized enterprises. Therefore, to focus on small and medium-sized enterprises, cross-border activity is, a high, is an important priority for us. And in this framework, the Italian presidency intends to uh, make progress on in the negotiations concerning the proposed uh, directive uh, concerning uh, single-member private limited companies. We intend to work closely with you and to work in order to at achieve an agreement in the Council, possibly by the end of uh, this uh, semester, so that uh, we can start up uh, our direct work with the European Parliament and reach a first reading agreement within a short time frame. I think that I could uh, stop at this point, uh, Chairman, in order to allow some uh, room for some time for debate. There are some other important points that I wish to uh, mention, but I will stop here. And we will be following up the activities uh, uh, carried out by the European Commission on another issue, which is very important, which is geographical indications for non-agricultural products. And we'll look at the development of the directive that the Commission has uh, taken up as a continuation of its green paper. This can be a very concrete answer for a demand that is stated very strongly by European producers. That is, how we can take care uh, and strengthen their production and remove difficulties that they're facing at the European level in terms of the production and sale of their products which is something that uh, they would like to use to advantage. It's something very important for our producers and for our citizens. And it's an uh, issue that is still open and that we will need to deal with effectively because it is also linked up with the way that we will deal with the issue of the single market and the way that the European Union will also deal with some negotiations with third countries. So this is a very close link that needs to be... Um, solved in a very positive way involving everyone in order to promote and support European production and production that is linked to our cultural and territorial diversity that we have in Europe. We will have this, uh, we will hold an informal debate during our presidency in the Competitiveness Council meeting of uh, December 5th and I hope to meet again with your uh, committee on this issue. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you very much, <clears throat> Mr. Undersecretary. Uh, you have uh, uh, very competently um, completed uh, the speech of um, uh, Mr. Minister Orlando, uh, and you have uh, said many things that are at uh, our hearts of this committee and that are of major interest uh, of, of the jury committee. Um, I would uh, be very grateful if we could now pass to the uh, exchange of views. And uh, uh, we have Mr. Duhan uh, on this speech, please. Thank you, Chairman, uh, Under Secretary. Thank you as well. I was already lucky enough to hear you in another committee where you mentioned the question of transparency and information for citizens as regards the register of lobbies. Now, I'm interested uh, and concerned by a connected question you mentioned the need for European legislation to be harmonised uh, towards American legislation. And my question really is on what feeling you might have as regards the balance we could strike between protecting economic activity which is needed, which is broadly speaking protected 
by different national legislation, it could be in, in, uh, industrial property, uh, unfair competition, and so on and so forth. But this legislation on business confidentiality and secrets is not uh, governed by a single definition. It seems to be um, covered better in uh, US and UK law. Now, how how can you go about what, doing what you suggest without preventing uh, information getting to the public? Because obviously this information cannot be published if it's secret. So I'm a bit concerned about this, particularly as regards transparency. And for drawing attention to uh, abnormal behaviour by uh, companies, for instance, in tax havens uh, and elsewhere, uh, which is key in terms of uh, the EU and a uh, crucial interest to citizens as well. So information and transparency in the democratic functioning of the EU includes protection in terms of so sounding the alarm uh, and protecting journalists and those who uh, alert us to these serious behaviours. So how are you going to uh, strike a balance on this particular point? Thank you. Uh, next, uh, please, uh, Mrs. Regner. Thank you, Sean. Thank you for the... Thank you. And thank you for the very comprehensive information and the overview that you gave us. The Italian presidency has a lot on its plate with all of the topics that you've mentioned, uh, trademarks, trade secrets, and so on and so forth. My questions are as follows. Trade secrets. I'd like to echo um, what was said about company secrets. Very often, company secrets or the statement, uh, oh, this is a trade secret or a uh, company secret uh, is used to keep information from uh, company boards by saying uh, this is a company secret. Now what does the Italian presidency think of this uh, extremely complicated situation? What is it planning to do so that uh, employees um, can be involved, particularly if they are uh, involved in the decision-making process? Now. The second question um, actually follows on from the question that I, or I asked the same question to the Justice Minister, is where, well we don't know where the lines uh, lie in terms of differentiating between the different ministries. Um, you mentioned corporate governance at some length um, and spoke about management boards uh, and women on management boards. That's something that we have voted on in plen plenary. And we had some rudimentary information from the Justice Ministry on this point, but I think you would be more responsible, more competent uh, in that area. What is the Italian presidency planning, uh, not just uh, generally speaking, but in more specifics, uh, in more specific detail to, to do as regards women on boards? Then on um, competitiveness, my next point. You've mentioned this from different angles and what is needed and what should be done to foster competitiveness. Uh, competitiveness is seen in a type of triangle. Uh, companies need to be competitive, uh, the conditions need to be created for them to be so, but there should not be unfair, distorted competition. It should be the same for everyone in the interests of um, employees and also in the interests of consumers. Uh, they should all be uh, on a level playing field, really, in terms of their significance. Now, this is not just the case of the financial market regulation, um, but also at the <coughs> governance level. A number of dossiers, a number of files have been adopted. And now my question, to be more specific, is on the SUP. These uh, mini limited companies that I think uh, are positive. Now what is the Italian presidency planning here? 
in order to um, make some headway with this proposal in terms of the rights of employees, consumer rights, citizens' rights, um, so that all of those rights are protected and not just uh, to uh, push competitiveness downwards. Thank you. The next speaker is Mrs. Rosier. Merci, President. Uh, thank you, Chair. Minister. Uh, th thank you very much for that presentation. It's uh, very complete and gave us the priorities of the Italian Presidency. There are three subjects that uh, called my attention, that of uh, trademarks and progress has been made. To, uh, I mean, the fact that we have a text on uh, trademarks is noteworthy. The presidency and the parliament, uh, uh, this committee in particular, have been working on this. But I'd like some more detail, if I could, on two points in particular. In the council proposal, it seems finally we have provisions on uh, controls for goods in transit. Could you tell us a little bit more about the conditions uh, for those controls or checks? And the second point. What ideas, uh, what modalities are being planned uh, in terms of uh, cooperation with um, bodies protecting trademarks? The information that has been given uh, shows that uh, the Council is planning provisions in this area, but what are the specifics? You explained that given the different changes in uh, the digital world, our legislation needs to be adapted and that work does need to be carried out, of course. But I think we need to be particularly careful. Now we're seeing um, value being um, divided up along the value chain with digital enterprises that tend to um, get most of this value. So let's be careful. Let's make sure that um, this is shared or the value is shared uh, fairly to um, creators and authors as well. And the last point, it was very pleasing to here you talk about GIs for non-food products, geographical indications that is. That's definitely a means of boosting uh, local production and competitiveness and to guarantee that jobs can be retained at the local level in Europe and that jobs can be created by really um, creating value for these products and through exchanges with uh, and trade with third countries. I realise we're at the beginning of the process now, at the Commission level, but manifestly this is a proposal that you uh, have taken a positive stance on. But what is the state of play in the Council on this particular issue? Thank you. Thank you very much. And the uh, last on the speaking list is Mr Cavaglia. Merci, President. Thank you, Chairman. Minister Sandra. You are someone that we've often uh, had contacts with, uh, and uh, I think it's uh, well worth pointing out to the audience here that uh, you are a uh, Member of Parliament of long standing, particularly uh, in European affairs, and it's good to see you in your position. The Italian President's uh, semester only has four months, really, where you can act in, but the two months of July and August, uh, I know you weren't shirking. Uh, your government was preparing as much as it could the uh, guidelines to get Europe back on track because the political cycle is pretty exceptional. 
given the amount of uh, scepticism of voters in the European elections, and also given up the shake, given the shake up uh, to um, uh, the setup, the power setup in Europe with its uh, older population, older industry. Now, um, I said to Miss Orlando a moment ago that uh, if uh, deeds do follow uh, words, the um, leader of your presidency, the head of your presidency, um, has said that there have been dramas that have affected us, Italy included, and that we really do need to try and relaunch European uh, greatness by f focusing on the essentials. Sandra, we need to rethink subsidiarity. I feel that Europe as a continent needs to be governed politically, but it needs to do what countries cannot do themselves. But it needs to have a doctrine by which the member states of the EU can apply EU rules in subsidiarity. So they can ask themselves, what can we do for European, the European Union? And in what you said, there are two things that I'd like to focus on, or, per or perhaps two things I'd like to add. Firstly, I do really share your opinion, uh, and uh, it would be a shame uh, that your presidency uh, won't last for two or three years, uh, and that is to get rid of this habit that we've had for about 10 years or so, that uh, minor texts uh, on the size of bees or whatever uh, uh, are blocking up the European uh, uh, political process. In your program, it, it seems that you want to do politics, as it were, in the greater sense of the word. And we need policies to be able to compete globally in globalization. And we need those that will galvanize our, our economies. Second point that I wanted to stress that's very important as well because I think it stems from this idea of Europe's strength. I support your interest and the interest of your governance, government and your presidency and uh, of yourself, Sandra, uh, in terms of intellectual property. When you look at two continents, the United States and Europe, you can see one thing that is crystal clear the strength of the providers in the United States, uh, they really do feed off what we do in Europe. Perhaps two thirds to versus a third. You're not allowed to steal an orange, but lots of people, including people in this parliament, think that it's fine to steal a, a, a work you know far better than I that you need that you can't have culture without uh, uh, protecting culture. Um, so I'm pleased to see what you indeed uh, do plan to address issues such as protecting uh, copyrights. Mr. Secretary, as there is nobody else on the speaking list, may you please take the floor and respond. Bene, grazie, grazie, Presidente. All right. Thank you, Chairman. I'll begin with uh, the last uh, speech and while greeting my friend Jean-Marie Cavada. And let me take up the issues that he raised. Unfortunately, I did not mention the issue of subsidiarity, but you did well to do so, uh, Mr. Cavada. It was implied since, uh, on the one hand, I insisted, as you encouraged us to do as well, well, th thank you for wishing us three years for our presidency, but that would really be bad for our health. To end that digression, uh, let me say that uh, subsidiarity was implied, and I didn't 
although I didn't uh, cite it, when I said that we need to fight against the excesses of regulation and bureaucracy. Let me mention an example from my country. Bureaucratic and regulatory excess are a form of s subsidiarity turned backward. We really need to change direction in terms of the approach that we have uh, adopted towards subsidiarity and the one that's been adopted by each of our governments. The Italians see Europe as being very distracted uh, when it uh, is an issue of commercial negotiations, and they're wondering why. Because if there's a level where we can promote European production, it's in view of it, it's the area of uh, international uh, trade uh, agreements and uh, negotiations. And a large part of European industrial policy, in fact, is developed in uh, commercial codes and uh, treaties and uh, negotiations. And the citizens in many countries, including mine, see the European Union as being quite distracted on this point. Instead, though, it is quite committed. Um, it's quite committed in terms of telling Italians how they should uh, serve olive oil on the table. So we should avoid going into useless details, that is, telling Italians how to serve olive oil on the table. And uh, instead, we need to look at our competence uh, uh, and tr such as trade policy and common agricultural policy in order to um, find a way that will favor production. That is just an example that I can mention. And as the current presidency, we have just taken up the good work that was carried out by the uh, Greek presidency concerning subsidiarity and proportionality. We've expanded this work and discussed it in the informal general uh, meeting of Mil uh, held in Milan last week. And we said that the beginning of this new legislative term is requiring us to think about the way that the European institutions work and the way that the European Union works, to see how it has worked in terms of subsidiarity and proportionality and other matters as well, and look at how to improve the way that it works. Because before we mention, first we need to mention a framework of principles and then figure out our policies within that framework of principles. And this is linked up with uh, the way that the institutions uh, will work. And that's why the issue of subsidiarity is very important uh, for, our, for each presidency. And we will submit a report on this issue, on the way that the European institutions are working, and some uh, aspects that have to do with fundamental rights, interinstitutional agreements, uh, interinstitutional cooperation, and in particular, the issue of subsidiarity and proportionality. Uh, President Juncker has provided us uh, some reassuring indications concerning uh, ways that the European Union is going to deal with this, and we need to concentrate on the core business of the European Union. In this point of view, we are heading in the right direction and we aim to encourage this as the presidency currently in service. Another issue that you mentioned is creativity and intellectual uh, property rights and new technology. There isn't very much that I could add to what uh, you, Mr. Cavada, and uh, Mrs. De Rosier said, because you really developed a priority that we are very sensitive to. We are aware of our duty to um, support creativity, because it's uh, a blessing of the European Union that we have artists and uh, creative people. and. They have something that they can provide for our Europe. And that is something that requires us to provide an effective uh, legal response concerning uh, technological innovation. We shouldn't place obstacles for creating new jobs and new businesses uh, concerning technological innovation. But we need to, at the same time, follow the great priority of uh, supporting art and creative activity and intellectual property. And we are definitely committed to work in the, along the same lines that you have uh, mentioned and specified. As for the issue of, uh, trans uh, of uh, goods in uh, transit, this is an important issue. 
and we believe that the compromise that we reached concerning inspection of goods in transit, on the one hand, respects international norms and uh, international trade agreements. So I think that it has saved us uh, from some doubts concerning legitimacy, because it is um, absolutely legitimate. And then we had a difficult uh, debate, uh, and the presidency of the Council has confirmed our position. And we believe that this is a concrete and balanced solution that we managed to reach concerning the issue of um, counterfeit goods in transit through the European Union. C counterfeiting is a huge obstacle to the uh, growth of the economy in Europe. It's a huge obstacle to the creation of jobs. And we also believe that often it uh, dangers uh, health and the health and safety of uh, consumers. And all of these are good reasons to support this agreement, which was difficult to reach and which was found in the Council, and to try to conclude uh, on this point uh, in accordance with the terms that uh, we have attained with this compromise position. It's a position that satisfies us and that was very difficult to reach. And if we uh, try to reopen the issue, uh, we will lose the uh, forward progress that we've made. Now, as for single member development companies and the issue of corporate governance and management, you mentioned the issue of um, joint uh, management. And let me remind you, Mrs. Regner, that the Council's text has a safeguard clause concerning various issues uh, concerning joint management of companies that you raised. Therefore, we believe that from this point of view, on the one hand, uh, that is, the concerns that uh, you uh, raised, uh, this, uh, the safeguards contained in this clause cover, cover them. As far as the issue of the two fundamental freedoms that I mentioned in my uh, speech, that is, um, the fact that we have uh, some guiding principles uh, that indicate our great, um, our main priorities, and this is where fund freedom of the press and freedom of information and con the consumer's right to information are uh, important. And the they need to be present because they're issues that are highly relevant. We need to think that many small and medium-sized enterprises currently make use of uh, trade secrets because they don't have financial resources, for example, to um, obtain patents. And that's why more support concerning the protection, uh, protection from theft of their uh, secrets and intellectual property will help, the, help growth and competitiveness of uh, businesses and head in the direction that you mentioned. It is possible on the one hand, to have growth of small and medium-sized enterprises without placing excessive limits on them. And freedom of uh, information is something that you were right to uh, mention. As far as um, companies, I think it was uh, Mrs. Regner who uh, raised uh, this issue. We, as Italians, have excellent experience concerning the uh, issue of uh, corporate governance and uh, equal uh, opportunities in companies. We have, we used to have 6% uh, uh, women on uh, corporate boards and now we've reached more than uh, 30% and I'm not sh sure whether you were there when I was speaking in the FEM committee but uh, I mentioned a lot of progress that we have made in this issue and the framework that we've applied is something that could be applied at the European level. This is an issue that is uh, very debated within the Council. Our intention is to reach a general framework in the Council, but currently there is a blocking minority opposing this, and we are determined to work in order to convince uh, more people and obtain a qualified majority. And maybe you, uh, from your uh, position, could uh, help us uh, by working on uh, your, on your countrymen in order to um, unblock the situation and to 
attain a greater possibility of um, reaching an agreement and a decision. From this point of view, we will do um, everything that we can in order to uh, make progress in this direction because we think that it's in the interest of Europe to do so. In Italy, so far, we have had a good experience with uh, improving gender parity in this uh, point. You also mentioned, or rather reacted to, the issue of geographic indications concerning non-agricultural uh, products. This is something that I mentioned in my introduction as well, as a truly fundamental issue that, as I see things, is in, involves uh, a large part of the confidence that we need to re-establish between Europe and, the ci and its citizens, and especially between Europe and small-scale producers. And I hope that the Europeans will learn from the lessons of the recent past and adopt an approach that will be different and more consistent, not only with our industrial traditions, but also with our economic interests, th those that uh, are our interests today and will be so tomorrow. We need to have the possibility of supporting the requests of uh, producers regional uh, production and small-scale production, because if we fail to uh, create a regulatory framework that will also support uh, the territory, traditions, and agricultural diversity, we will have negative uh, effects in terms of employment and in terms of safeguarding various um, sectors and regions. And here, let me uh, take up again the issue of subsidiarity. In some cases, such as this one, obviously, action is required and action to provide support at the European level. And here, this is an issue where regional and local peculiarities require action at the European level. And for the economic reasons that I mentioned, this is the case, but that's also true because they have, are facing very many difficulties in selling their products outside their own uh, local and regional context. Because we need to, and we need to support them to in uh, expanding beyond their uh, limited uh, geographical uh, framework. Because this will support growth and the creation of jobs. And it's evident that uh, to the extent that we will manage to uh, govern the single market and uh, regulate uh, these sorts of uh, problems and concerns. That means that we will be successful in providing a concrete response to the issue of non-agricultural geographic indications. And the way that we will pose this issue and the way that we will be perceived and our negotiating capacity in various negotiating fora with third countries will also depend on this. So there is a clear direct link in legal terms in terms of political and in terms of political positions between how we as the European Union will uh, uh, govern these issues uh, in uh, internally and how we will be able to support our positions in international negotiations and earlier I made a reference to the fact that uh, we will open a debate in the Co competitors council at the end of September and the Italian presidency is going to pose the same issues that I mentioned to you here in Parliament. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Under Secretary, thank you very much for attempting to accomplish this mission impossible to cover so many topics in a limited uh, time period. Uh, you have seen that this committee expects very much from uh, the Italian presidency, and I'm sure that in your person we have the guarantee that much will be achieved during these six months. Thank you. thank you very much for coming. Thank you.